Hello everyone, welcome to Yadna Investment Academy. Today we are going to compare various gold buying options in India. Let's directly go into the comparison. We will compare the four most popular gold buying options currently available. The first is sovereign gold bond. These are the bonds issued by government of India every two to three months. You can see a detailed video on this. Second option is gold ETF that is gold exchange traded fund. This option is provided by all major mutual fund houses. Through this option you can buy and sell a gold just like you buy and sell a stock or share. Third option is gold funds. They are also provided by mutual fund houses. They work similar to regular open-ended mutual funds and invest their money in gold ETFs. Fourth and last and of course the most popular option to buy gold is buying in physical form. Let us look into their comparison in detail and understand which is the best option for us to go for. All four options are tacked directly to the gold prices and any change in gold prices also brings change in the value of these options. So if there is any capital appreciation in gold prices, all of them will appreciate. Second parameter of comparison is interest, which is changing the way we look at return on investment on gold and is becoming a very important parameter to buy gold. Sovereign gold bonds are providing a 2.5% of interest rate over and above the capital appreciation in their current trench which is fifth. Whereas all the other options do not provide any interest rate over the capital appreciation. This interest rate is the biggest attraction to buy sovereign gold bond. Next parameter is purity. When we buy paper gold we are sure of the purity of the gold as we get the highest purity equivalent of gold like in sovereign gold bond we get 0.999 purity in gold ETF and in gold funds we get 0.995 purity but in physical gold we can never be sure if we have got the right purity of gold or not next parameter is ease of buying these gold options and of course the physical gold is easiest to buy as we can get it from any jewelry shop or bank we can subscribe to sovereign gold bond by going to any commercial bank or through DMAT account. For gold ETF we require only DMAT account and there is no other way to buy gold ETF. Whereas the gold funds we can buy through our mutual fund account or through our DMAT account as well. So physical gold is easiest to buy and gold ETF is most difficult to buy. Next comparison parameter is can we do SIP in these options. And gold funds are clear winner here as they are the only options where we can do SIP easily and not others. From liquidity perspective, gold ETF, gold funds and physical gold all are very liquid and can be sold anytime. Whereas the sovereign gold bonds have a lock-in of 5 years but they are tradable on exchange and if you want to sell them before 5 years you can do so on the exchange but the liquidity is very low there. Next parameter is exit load which means the penalty which is imposed if we take out gold before a certain time period. Gold ETF and physical gold you have no exit load so you can take out the money anytime you want whereas gold funds typically have 1% of penalty or exit load if we take out gold before one year and sovereign gold bonds have a lock in of five years so we cannot take out but there is no exit load after five years. Regarding the availability, except sovereign gold bonds, all other options are always available and can be bought anytime. Whereas sovereign gold bonds you can buy only once in every 2-3 months. In last one year, government has issued 5 trenches and in each trench you can buy the bonds for one week. Now let's discuss about an important parameter called expense ratio which details about the charges such as fund management charges or other operational expenses which is deducted from our yearly returns. In gold ETF most of the fund houses charges an average of approximately 1% of our investment as expense ratio. And gold funds which invests in these gold ETFs have an approximate expense ratio of around 1.5%. In physical gold, though we do not pay any yearly expense ratio for management, but we do incur one-time making charges. In case of gold bars or coins, the making charges are mostly around 5%, which can go up to 15% in case of jewelry. 
Interestingly, sovereign gold bonds do not have any expense ratio. All the charges incurred by the banks and other institutions are borne by the government. Other charges we have to pay are brokerage, which are one-time charges paid to the stockbroker for execution of the transaction and it is only valid in case of gold ETFs. Next factor is comparison of the tax implication of these various options. Gold investments are taxed in the same manner as debt funds. If we redeem our gold investments before three years, then we have to pay short term capital gain tax, which means we have to pay tax as per our income tax slab. Whereas if we redeem after three years, then it falls under long term capital gain tax where we get the indexation benefit. You can get more details on tax implication in our video tax on debt funds. In this tax implication, there is an outlier, which is sovereign gold bond. In sovereign gold bond, you don't have to pay any capital gain tax if you keep the bond till maturity, which is of course more than five years. Now, if you want the physical delivery of the gold, which you have bought in the paper format, you cannot do that in sovereign gold bond. You cannot do that in gold funds. In gold ETF, you can get physical delivery, but for that you need to order minimum one kg. Except in physical gold, in all other options, there is no quality check required and there is no storage charges or risk involved. In case of gold ETFs and gold funds, you are not allowed to take any loan against these assets. Whereas in sovereign gold bonds, the government has allowed to take a loan against these bonds. And in physical gold, you can get gold loan against it. Based on all the parameters discussed till now, let's now compare how rupees 1 lakh investment in all these four options will give returns after one year, three years and five years. Let's assume gold price rise of 10% per annum. Then these will be the returns after one year. Sovereign gold bond will be highest as we get 2.5% extra interest rate over and above our capital appreciation. Physical gold will be lowest as we have assumed 5% one time making charges in first year. So due to lack of any expense ratio as well as additional interest which we get on sovereign gold bond, they perform the best in all the years as compared to other forms. Also you must have noticed we have given various green stars and red stars during our discussion of various parameters. Green star denotes a favorable parameter and a red star denotes an unfavorable parameter. These are the number of red and green stars each option has got. So clearly with highest number of green stars and the best overall return performance, sovereign gold bonds gives us the best option to invest in gold. So if you want to know more about these calculations or have any other question, please do write in the comment section below. With this, we are closing this topic. Have a great time ahead.